everybody, I'm here to do a reading wrap up for the month of April. I read nine books, it's not a lot for me, but I am reading more than I was. I've been, uh, you know, so let's go through them. So the first book I read was The Single Mum's Wish List. So this is about a girl named Martha who has separated from her husband and moving back in with her parents with her son. Um, so she and her friend set her up a, a profile on a dating site and she starts messaging this bloke who seems to be absolutely perfect for her um, but nobody believes that he actually exists. He does but in the meantime she gets on with her life, um, tries to run her business, takes a promotion at work uh, and so on and meets and gets quite cosy with one of her co-workers and finds love somewhere else. But yeah, it's, it's, it took me a while to get into it, but a very enjoyable little book. And I gave it, look, I've got my, my phone here, um, four out of five stars, so it must have been good. Then I read Frank and Marilyn by Edward Z. Epstein. The Lives, the Loves and the Fascinating Relationship of Frank Sinatra and Marilyn Monroe. This has a few tabs in it, obviously, because I've reviewed it on my Marilyn book, uh, TikTok account. It's all right, there's nothing special about it. Um, I think he puts more into the relationship between Frank and Marilyn than there actually was. He also, although he doesn't acknowledge him, mentions um, she told her confidant Robert Slate said, now we all know that he has been um, discredited over the years. He never knew her to the extent. He did meet her. That's a fact. We know that. Um, they weren't close. They weren't in a relationship. They weren't particularly friends. His phone number wasn't in her book, which it would have been, um, and so on, so on. He claimed that they got married. That has been disproven because she was uh, shopping in Beverly Hills with Natasha Latesse at the time, and so on. So... And then they go on to the nonsense about the Kennedys. Again, this has been disproven many times and a new book is looking even more into those conspiracy theories that I am currently reading. Look out for a review of that at the end of the month. Um, so yeah, I gave this one, I gave it three because there was some information in there that was interesting, but it wasn't worth anything more than that. Unless you're a diehard, it's really not worth, a fan of either, it's not worth picking up. I also uh, uh, read uh, um, a couple of ebooks, so I'm just going to find the covers. I won't be a second. I'm not really ready for. Okay, so for my Agatha Christie pick in April, I read *The Mysterious Affair at Styles*. Uh, this is the very first Hercule Poirot story, and he is called to Styles, where the lady of the house has been murdered. He's called there. Well, actually, he's not called there. He's actually holidaying in the village, which is quite um, convenient. Um, his friend Hastings is friends with the son of the person murdered, or the stepson, and uh, Hastings has gone down there as well, and is there when the murder occurs. And Hastings thinks he's solving the mystery, whereas he's really not doing very well. And of course, Hercule Poirot does all the work. So a lovely introduction to our little Belgian friend. I can always see uh, David Suchet playing him. I can't see anybody else as Hercule Poirot, just simply because he is the embodiment of what that little Belgian detective should look like. And I know that sounds silly, but it's true. Um, loved him playing him. After that, I read another Marilyn book. This was a reread. This is Marilyn Monroe, uh, A Beautiful Child by Sherma Art Book. So it contains an essay by the author Truman Capote, who Marilyn was friends with. Um, and basically it is, other than the essay, it's just a book of photos. It was previously published in a paperback form, um, a very small paperback. Probably paperback's not much bigger than the picture on the back, um, but pretty much it's the same. I think there might be a few more pictures in the paperback version, but I wanted the hardback. So I actually bought this and yeah, I reread it. Nice. Right, what was after that one? Then, uh, Before I Find You, this is by Ali Knight. You hire her, you trust her, you shouldn't. So this is about a private detective named Maggie Malone and she runs her own private detective agency where she watches husbands for a living. So basically she's hired by women who thinks their husbands are having an affair and Maggie goes out to try and prove it. And in this case, she's hired by Helene, who is married to a property developer, uh, Gabe, and she's very, very suspicious because he's behaving a bit weird. 
and he has a daughter named Alice who's Helene's stepdaughter. His first wife died in a car crash um, and she is starting to work for her father at the company and then she finds a note that says you owe me, I'm not going away and all hell breaks loose in their life. I'm not going to tell you because the twist is really good but this I gave it four stars. Now Agatha Christie I gave four stars, Truman Capote four stars and before I find you guess what four stars because it was a good book. Okay then I read a book by an author I've read before um, and it's by Adrian Cousins it's called It's Payback Time he's the guy that wrote the Jason Apsley series <coughs> and this is a new series set in the same fictional town uh, in which we meet um, this guy and I can't think of his name offhand who in 1983 is a work convention I think it's Marty his name's Marty and he sleeps with um, one of his co-workers the book is called It's Payback Time and basically her name's Deanna and he has a heart attack and dies uh, in her hotel bed and so obviously his pregnant wife finds out and obviously things happen. However, he wakes up and it's suddenly 2016. So what's happened in the meantime? Well, his wife married his best friend, Sam, who's a horrible bloke. His daughter's born and she's abused by Sam. He, she also, his, her mother also has another child, I assume with him. It's her half brother who's really nasty. Joseph, his name is. And they diddle her out of his, out of her entitled inheritance. Now, her mother kills herself because she feels guilty because of the abuse that um, her daughter, uh, and I can't think of her name either because it, it's a good book though, uh, endured and so she's left on her own. She's poor, she's practically destitute and she's about to lose her job in the bookies that her stepfather and his son own and run which rightfully should be probably hers. Into this mix appears Marty and Diana. Marty has woken up, he knows nothing about 2016, so he does nothing about the internet, nothing about iPhones, nothing about anything that we take for granted today, digital cameras, none of this existed in 83, so that's quite funny as he gets to use with it. He's also sporting a moustache and a mullet, and it probably looks like one of the guys out of the 118118 adverts, if you know what I mean. And so he's got to come to terms with living or being alive briefly in the future to save his daughter and get back her rightful inheritance. Now, her grandfather is in a care home, and in his care home, we very briefly do re-meet Jason Apsley, who moves there after his wife Beth dies. So that's quite a nice little nod to, to, nod to the past books, which I always appreciate from an author. So this is called It's Payback Time by Adrian Cousins. I gave it four stars. I loved it. I have got the next one to read, and I will be reading that one hopefully this month. I really do enjoy those books. So yay! Hey, um, yeah, yeah, I've, I've had a good reading month. Then I read a book called The Woman Inside by E.G. Scott. <coughs> this is a story about Rebecca and Paul. Both of them are not exactly very nice people. They're nice, but they're not, they've got dark pasts. Um, but now something's happening in their marriage and it's threatening to tear them apart, and she believes Paul is having an affair and he does have an affair with a woman and this woman goes missing as did what does one of his previous girlfriends so he is on the police's radar of potentially being involved with it. Um, Rebecca discovers a plan by Paul to build a life away from her or does she because we don't know this. She starts tailing him, she starts tailing you know various other people uh, the woman Sheila that he had an affair with starts stalking them and so on. It's a very very dark book. Very enjoyable. Great twist at the end. Yeah so I give that one four stars. I recommend picking it up if you find a copy. Uh, now My Sister's Keeper. I'm not going to tell you all about this because you all know the story of My Sister's Keeper. If you haven't read the book you've read the, you've seen the film. Yes, the film ending differs to that of the book. Um, Jodie Pico apparently wasn't too happy about that, but I know that some people prefer the film, some people prefer the book. I haven't seen the film yet, but I plan on watching it. I did give it five stars because it made me cry. Again, I agree with critics that say the ending was a bit of a cop-out. 
um, it could have been a better ending. I can think of two or three other endings that might have worked with it. But it also kind of makes sense in in the world. And it is sad. It's a sad book. <coughs> other people um, on Goodreads have criticised uh, all the other characters' backstories. But I think they were important to understand how they relate to Anna. So her brother being the mess up that he is turning his life around at the end and becoming a police officer. It is entirely possible. Um, and I think it's important to see his point of view, to see what he's feeling, because he's completely neglected. As far as he's concerned, he doesn't exist. It's all about Anna and Katie, and it, it, I, f I felt for him. He's the older brother, and he's completely neglected. But there you go. And finally, I read a book called Of All the Gin Joints by Mark Bailey, with illustrations by Edward Hemingway. So this takes us on a jaunt around Hollywood, meeting various Hollywood stars. As you can tell by the title of All the Gin Joints, it does mention a lot of alcohol and the drinks that the, the um, stars drank, the places they drank them in. Also features some certain directors as well, like John Huston, <coughs> and, and various, excuse me, other people. Now, what is good with this is, is you do want more. This goes right up to the 70s. Um, there are certain stars that aren't featured, although they are mentioned, such as Marilyn Monroe. She's not a featured character in this book or a featured person. Whereas she'll be mentioned in other chapters, so if, if they're talking about Clark Gable, if they're talking about Jean Harlan, they might mention Marilyn. But she doesn't have a section of her, mainly because Marilyn didn't go out on the town a lot. She wasn't a big party person, contrary to popular belief. Uh, she'd rather stay at home with a good book. Like me. However, not only do we have what the stars and the directors like to drink and do and get up to and the scandals they were involved in. She's mentioned uh, in one with Frank Sinatra, The Wrong Door Aid which obviously um, is very much about her. But it also gives us a tour <coughs> of the night spots. They, they would have frequented the hotels, the restaurants like um, Theros, uh, Muscle and Frank, the Roosevelt, the Bel Air, all these major places. Uh, the, 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 uh, the Coconut Grove, I can't think of what it was called then and so on. And you also get cocktails, recipes of the drinks that some of them like to make. Uh, and drink. So of course there's a bit on the Chateau Marmont, uh, F. Scott Fitzgerald, let's see if I can find one of the drinks. So you get a Prairie Oyster cocktail, you've got the Beverly Hills Polo Lounge, a classic martini and so on. And the recipes are all in here of what you need to make these cocktails. So if your favourite star's cocktail is in here, you can drink like your favourite star. And I gave this one, I think I gave it, I don't know now, let me have a look. I've usually got my journal with me and it's downstairs. And I gave this one four out of five. It was a very, very big four out of five star month, uh, last month. <coughs> so that's all the books I read. I hope you've enjoyed the uh, listening to my ramble on about the books very, very quickly, I know. Um, I hope you've enjoyed it. Let me know if you've read any of these books and if you have, let me know what you think about them and I'm out of focus for some reason, I don't know why, but I'll see you in the next one. Bye!